Hi everyone, this video on neural networks is a free extract from my very affordable Udemy course, Beginner's Guide to Machine Learning. To get this course at a discounted price, click the link in the description below or use coupon code SAPROGRAMMER at checkout. In the introductory video, we covered the use of supervised machine learning to create a classification model that would help Farmer Jack find the perpetrator responsible for his missing donuts. In this video, we will continue along this path by introducing a popular machine learning algorithm, the Artificial Neural Network. To help explain how artificial neural networks work, let's go back to the island of Aramamore. On the island, there is a neighboring farm to Farmer Jack's, owned by Farmer Rose. Now, Farmer Rose has entered the National Flower Contest. To win this contest, a contestant needs to present three different types of flowers. A panel of flower experts would then judge the flowers, awarding them points based on features such as height, intensity of petal color, and overall beauty of the flower. Farmer Rose decides that she wants to present hydrangeas, daisies, and sunflowers at the contest. Now, unlike normal flowers that you would find in your garden, which need minimal effort and care to grow, a prize-worthy flower needs the right amount of water at the right timing to grow optimally. Farmer Rose builds a plumbing system that takes in a certain amount of water and waters each plant accordingly. The plumbing system only waters the plants on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, as prize-winning flowers only need to be watered three days a week. The water is channeled directly from the rainfall of that day, which means that the amount of rain on a given day is what is inputted into the plumbing system. At this point, if you feel the need, you may want to take out some paper and pen for notes as we are about to go into some figures. On a Monday on the island, it always rains enough for 10 liters of water to be inputted into the plumbing system. On a Tuesday, it only rains enough for 20 liters to be inputted into the plumbing system. And on a Wednesday, it only rains enough for 15 liters to be inputted into the plumbing system. In addition, the three different flowers require different amounts of water each day. The hydrangeas require 2.8 liters on a Monday, 5.6 liters on a Tuesday, and 4.2 liters on a Wednesday. The daisies require 2.1 liters on a Monday, 4.2 liters on a Tuesday, and 3.15 liters on a Wednesday. And finally, the sunflowers require 2.1 liters on a Monday, 4.2 liters on a Tuesday, and 3.15 liters on a Wednesday. If this was a little confusing or hard to remember, just remember that on a Monday, 10 liters of water go in, and 2.8 liters need to go to the hydrangeas, 2.1 to the daisies, and 2.1 to the sunflowers. On a Tuesday, 20 liters of water go in, and 5.6 liters need to go to the hydrangeas, 4.2 to the daisies, and 4.2 to the sunflowers. And on a Wednesday, 15 liters of water go in, 4.2 liters go to the hydrangeas, 3.15 to the daisies, and 3.15 to the sunflowers. So basically, an input of 10 should give you an output of 2.8, 2.1, and 2.1. An input of 20 should give you an output of 5.6, 4.2, and 4.2. And an input of 15 should give you an output of 4.2, 3.15, and 3.15. Now let's get into Farmer Rose's plumbing system. The plumbing system consists of four pipes altogether and a special device connecting the four pipes. For our purposes, we shall call this device a gizmo. This gizmo is a special type of gizmo and is blue in color. So let's call it a blue gizmo. Each pipe has an electronic valve that automatically adjusts the pipe's width, which results in different amounts of water flowing out of each pipe. 
The blue gizmo is responsible for taking the water from the pipe on the left and distributing it through the pipes on the right. The blue gizmo also ensures that the plants only get watered on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. It does this through a special built-in mechanism that allows the same amount of water coming in from the pipe on the left to be passed onto the pipes on the right if and only if the water coming in from the left pipe is equal to or above 5 litres. If it is below 5 litres, the mechanism prevents the water from flowing through and instead passes the water into a nearby stream. Given that on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the rainfall does not produce enough water to pass through, this means that the plants are not watered on these days, which is ideal. If we are to draw a graph to describe this mechanism, it would look something like this, where up until there are 5 litres of water coming in from the left pipe, there will be no water being distributed into the pipes on the right. At the point that 5 litres of water are being pumped through the left pipe, and after any more than 5 litres of water are being pumped through the left pipe, the mechanism allows the same amount of water being pumped from the left pipe into the pipes on the right. On Monday, as usual, 10 litres of rainwater enter the system through the left pipe. Now, the initial widths of the pipes are randomly configured by the system. We can think of this as hypothesis 1. The first possible configuration of the pipe widths are shown on the screen. As we can see, on a Monday, 10 litres of water go into the pipe. However, the pipe's width is only 0.4, which means that only 40% of the water coming in can make it through. This means that only 4 litres make it to the blue gizmo, which isn't enough for the blue gizmo to let the water through, and therefore no water passes into the pipes on the right. This results in 0 litres of water being outputted to each plant, which does not correspond to the required outputs for Monday. From this point, the widths of the valves are recalibrated to form hypothesis 2. However, it is a new day, Tuesday, and now we input 20 litres of water. The new width of the pipe on the left is 0.7, so only 70% of the water on that day goes through. This means that the gizmo gets 14 litres of water. However, this is enough to allow the gizmo to let the water through. Only 35% of the 14 litres gets passed onto the hydrangeas, which is 4.9 litres. Only 40% gets passed to the daisies, which is 5.6 litres. And only 25% gets passed to the sunflowers, which is 3.5 litres. This isn't the required amount of water for each flower type on each day, and hence this hypothesis isn't completely accurate. A new hypothesis is formed for Wednesday, which results in a plumbing system with the pipe widths being a little closer to what is required. Then this process repeats with Monday and continues to repeat. Eventually, the pipe widths will reach values that supply the required amount of water for each plant on the required days. Now, Farmer Rose has an idea to add fertilized water high in nitrogen and fertilized water high in phosphorus to a system. These waters need to be added in separately. The fertilizers are also added in different amounts on different days. The plants would take different volumes of the mixed liquid on different days. So to illustrate this, we now have a system with three pipes coming in from the left and three pipes emerging from the right. What would happen in this case is that the nitrogen-rich water, the normal rainwater, and the phosphorus-rich water would mix up at the blue gizmo and, if it is above a certain volume, will be allowed to pass onto the right. So if, for example, the width of the nitrogen-rich water pipe was 0.5 and the width of the rainwater pipe was 0.4, and the phosphorus-rich water pipe was 0.2, this would mean that only 50% of the nitrogen-rich water inputted will flow through the pipe, 40% of the rainwater inputted will flow through the pipe, and 20% of the phosphorus-rich water would flow through the pipe. So if on a Monday, 
10 liters of each water inputs into each pipe, we would get 5 liters of nitrogen rich water, 4 liters of normal rainwater, and 2 liters of phosphorus rich water going into the blue gizmo. From this point, 5 liters, 4 liters, and 2 liters are added in the blue gizmo. So this equals 11 liters. Since this amount is high enough, it lets the mixed water pass through. From this point, the water is distributed. Obviously, the water isn't distributed correctly the first time, and an iterative process of readjusting the pipe widths is done to ensure that each plant gets the right amount of mixed water on each day. Now, imagine a more complex plumbing system made up of different types of gizmos and more connections between them, as well as more inputs and outputs across more days. This takes us into neural networks.